Yeah, thanks. Thanks a lot, uh, Mike. Uh, also from my side, good morning, good day, good afternoon to all of you. And yeah, I share your comment, uh, Mike, on, on Richard's uh, presentation. Nothing is makes it more realistic and, and, and uh, than really pictures and uh, real life uh, cases. So that was really interesting. Yeah, as, as mentioned, my name is Jens Römer. I represent FIATA, the voice of the global freight forwarders. And representing the global freight forwarders, I will obviously take a look at the more forwarders uh, specific threats. We've got heard, we heard about uh, goods, very uh, good specific uh, threats. Uh, that is basically risk related to the nature of the cargo itself, above all hazardous cargo, and uh, which are possibly time bombs uh, that are ticking. And whilst the good specific threat and uh, related exposure must also be of major concern for the freight forwarder, the typical freight forwarder handles all kinds of goods. These goods usually loaded in containers have one thing in common, uh, which is uh, the financial exposure. The cost that may accumulate with the uh, goods and containers sitting on some terminals doing nothing but counting the dollar of extra cost by the hour. Obviously in such situations, the freight forwarder often becomes a central party against which to seek regress for fees and associated costs. Uh, next slide, please, Ajay. Um, here we have a short overview of my presentation. And uh, obviously, I think not, not everybody is muted. I, I hear a lot of sound in the background. I think not everybody's muted. Okay, um, here we have a short overview of my uh, presentation. Obviously items such as acting as agent or principal plays a major part as far as the freight forwarder is concerned. Next slide, please. So let's start uh, with the definition. What are abundant goods? Can you go to the next slide, please? So what are abundant goods? Uh, abundant or uncollected goods are those goods obviously for which the consignee cannot be located or the consignee is refusing to uh, take delivery of the cargo and Richard had some uh, interesting cases there. So it, it can happen and of course we don't know what's inside the container. Uh, national legislation usually refers to conditions that need to be fulfilled for goods to be declared as uh, abundant. And one such criteria is obviously the period after which goods are considered to be abundant. But here we the problem begins for the freight forwarder. There is no globally commonly accepted practice covering all jurisdictions. They vary from country to country. The forwarder will need to, to clearly be aware of national legislation and will need to follow them. Jurisdictional differences also means that it is very important uh, to, to maintain a close dialogue with a local agent, with your network, with your agent at destination. In addition, it is important to know the difference in relation to local jurisdic uh, jurisdiction versus, versus the jurisdiction named in the contract of carriage. And recognizing that there may be jurisdictional challenges, a prudent approach would always be to obtain at the very early stage a legal opinion before proceeding. Prevention and due diligence, I think we mentioned it before and it's, it's basically only common sense. When mitigating the risk of being left with abandoned goods, focus must be given on the contractual party, the goods involved, and the trade lane involved. So let's start with identifying the counterparty. Many risks can be mitigated substantially right from the beginning, simply by having proper due diligence procedures in place. One simply needs to know with whom one is contracting, know your customer and its financial situation. But one should also have a reliable network and a trustworthy partner in overseas. It's a global problem. In this context, it's decisive to have consistent and well-documented procedures in place. Identifying the cargo, I think I would just repeat what Richard has mentioned. Some cargo is obviously more likely to be abundant than others. Relatively low value, high volume, used goods such as waste and scrap, used computer equipment or personal effects are known to be at high risk. Identifying the trade lane. Unconventional trade lanes may be a key indicator of illicit trade and should signal a red flag for further checks to be conducted. In addition, attention should be paid to certain social political circumstances, such as sanctions and embargoes, which may indicate a higher risk. Next slide, please. 
now to an item that is uh, very important for the freight forwarder. How uh, is the freight forwarder involved, acting as agent or as principal? So the freight forwarder as principal. Obviously, the freight forwarder acting as NVOCC, as carrier, by issuing their own bill of ladings, is concluding the contract of carriage directly with the shipping line and will be shown as shipper in the bill of lading. The forwarder is acting as principal and is fully liable for abandoned cargo towards the shipping line as per the contract of carriage, inclusively all related costs. So there's full, full liability, one is fully involved. Next slide, please. The forwarder acting as agent, where the cargo has been shipped under an ocean bill of lading only, and no house bill of lading has been issued, the freight forwarder is acting as agent, only as agent. In such cases, the forwarder is not party to the contract of carriage, the shipping line has a direct contractual relationship with the actual shipper under the bill of lading and the shipping line should look to the shipper for recovery of charges. In theory, the freight forwarder has a very comfortable situation. Next slide, please. However, the devil is in the detail. There's a potential risk for the forwarder acting as agent, which is the merchant clause. Shipping lines may find it difficult and not attractive to claim against the actual cargo interest, possibly because they may be domiciled in an unfavorable jurisdiction, or maybe they don't have sufficient assets. So it's an easy way out. Shipping lines may refer to the merchant clause. In these circumstances, shipping lines may try to recover from freight forwarders. The merchant clause is commonly appearing on bill of ladings and tries to place full liability on forwarders notify parties and others involved in the maritime supply chain. The exposure can be huge, and it is in no relation to the function of the freight forwarder acting as agent. Next slide, please. The question is if the merchant clause can be enforced. It is Fiatta's opinion that shipping lines should not be able to impose liability out of the contract of carriage on, on the freight forwarder through the merchant clause. This is simply because the freight forwarder acting as agent is not, is not part to, to the contract of carriage. As such, freight forwarder should seek legal advice if the merchant clause is legally enforceable in the relevant jurisdiction. So just acting as agent may not be sufficient. One should really uh, get proper legal advice. Uh, next slide, please. At this point, I would like to mention that the FMC uh, in the USA has been investigating the merchant clause and Fiat has submitted their position amongst others by establishing that merchant clauses are a common phenomenon through which carriers are trying to extend liability beyond the contractual parties to those who do not have any beneficial interest in the cargo in question. In doing so, such third parties are often exposed to joint and several liabilities despite not having consented to such terms and conditions of the bill of lading. There's obviously particular concern in situations of abandoned cargo, as well as demerge and detention charges. Next slide, please. Claim handling procedures. Speed is key. Fast and proactive action is decisive when dealing with abandoned goods. So proactive management control, good record keeping, will help to quickly identify risks and ensure that one can act quickly to minimize possible costs. Also, arrival dates and associated free periods should be closely monitored, together with the status events in the supply chain, such as free periods and deadlines. The longer the situation drags on, the higher the costs involved, possibly exceeding the commercial value of the goods themselves, and increasing the likelihood that the shipment remains uncollected and the consequences we have seen in Richard's presentation. Next slide, please. I think uh, this is the most uh, favored word in all presentations, communication. The shipper and the consignee need to be contacted immediately. Put a notice about this situation and giving a short deadline to collect the goods and settle any costs that have already accrued. Meanwhile, the freight forwarder should remain on full alert until the situation has been resolved. Formal notification should be sent immediately after the expiry of the free time and any provided deadline, explaining rights and obligations 
and specifically warning that any further delay or failure to take delivery will result in legal proceedings. In the instance that the cargo is abandoned, a final note should be issued explicitly stating that the necessary measures will be taken, including sale or disposal, and that all associated costs occurred will be for customer's account. Next slide, please. Damage control, damage control and demerge and detention. Demerge and detention charges are unreasonably high and should be mitigated. There's a high exposure towards the freight forwarder as shipping lines will go after the freight forwarder in case the shipper and consignee do not pay, among others uh, using the merchant clause. Above all, alternative storage solu solutions that are less expensive should be found. Get the goods outside the container. I guess the container is the most expensive uh, uh, warehouse today due to the demerge and detention. I need to spend a few more words on demerge and detention. I appreciate that containers are an important asset of the shipping lines. Shipping lines need them. They need to move cargo and should, containers should not be used to store cargo. But under the circumstances of abandoned cargo, it is unreasonable to insist on indefinite accumulation of demerge and detention charges. Also, because high charges lead to delays in negotiating solutions with the consequence that all parties involved and that includes the shipping lines, are stuck with a problem, are stuck with a problem on the terminal, possibly with a ticking bomb. Next slide, please. Fiatta has published a best practice guide on demerge and detention. And in this guide, we come to the following conclusion. There should be a limit on charges accrued that represent a reasonable compensation for the shipping lines in relation to the value of the container. FIATA suggests that commercial partners negotiate limits to the accrual of demerge and detention charges to a maximum, ideally related to the value of the purchase price of a new container. Next slide, please. The role of customs authorities. Obviously, customs plays an important role. As previously mentioned, in relation to the time period by which goods are considered or to be abandoned, Customs procedures play an important role in the process. Customs authorities are in particular interested in duties and taxes. The Kyoto, the Kyoto Convention clearly states that the party concerned shall not be required to pay the duties and taxes or shall be entitled for repayment. In other words, duties and taxes are not due. However, goods will have to be destroyed or made commercially useless under customs control and this may not come cheap, and any costs involved shall be borne by the party concerned. Next slide, please. Retention rights or lien to the goods. In the event that goods are abandoned, the carer may have a retention right and lien on the goods, with the right to request the sale of the goods to get paid. The specific mode of transport has an impact on how the freight forwarder can deal with the goods and whether there's a right of lien or retention. Regarding sea transport, it should be noted that the Rotterdam rules contain a provision that addresses the situation where the goods remain undelivered. In such cases, cases, the carrier, after giving proper notice, may take any appropriate and reasonable measure to dispose of the goods, including to have them sold in accordance to local practices, laws or regulations of the place where the goods are located. Most standard trading conditions negotiated and published by the National Freight Forwarders Associations do have a lien clause, and so obviously, obviously has the Fiatta Bill of Lading. Carefully check all terms of the contractual lien to make sure you comply with rules and regulation. Next slide, please. We got to look at the future, the role of digitalization also for abandoned goods. Digital, con digital contracting may help the process of dealing with abandoned goods, particularly if a system is used to share data and communicate with all parties involved. In addition, digitalization may provide an important tool to support the communication of information about a shipment, including its whereabouts, arrival times, and delays. Also, establishing an efficient and effective channel of data exchange and data communication between shipping lines 
freight forwarders and other parties, terminal operators, would help to ensure that freight forwarders can act with greater speed, thus substantially decreasing the costs at stake. Next slide, please. Yeah, I come to my conclusion. Situations of abandoned goods continue to be a key issue for freight forwarders, certainly in today's economic climate. It is therefore important that freight forwarders take important steps right from the beginning to reduce the risk exposure through the establishment of a strong standard due diligence and cargo management procedures. FIATA continues to be committed to shaping policy and practice to aid freight forwarders and supply chain professionals to tackle such situations. FIATA encourages the cooperation of all actors within the supply chain to proactively act in good faith in dealing with such situations and to collaborate on an industry level initiatives to find solutions for the benefit of the whole supply chain, such as through the adoption of digital means in a situation of abundant goods. It is simple. We need to communicate. It is our maritime supply, ch supply chain and any kind of problem requires all stakeholders to get together and communicate. That was this. Next slide, please. And uh, thank you from my side. Thanks for listening.